there you are. Hey Tofu, wait up. What's wrong with you? I have been waiting for you for so long and here you are just walking past me without even saying hi. Mm, I'm sorry Tia. I didn't mean to be rude to you. Sometimes I just can't understand my friends. Okay, calm down and tell me what happened. You know my friend Megan? Yes, the shy one with the curly hair, right? The one who's always helping you out with class notes and assignments. Yes. Isn't she wonderful? I think you should also help her out sometimes. Well, that's just what I did, Tia. And she is so upset with me now. She forgot her English assignment at home. So I did some of it for her and asked her to complete it and submit it. That's it. She got so offended. She hasn't said a word to me since then. And she won't answer me if I say something to her. Oh, that's strange. But I don't think she is the only one who is uncomfortable with people try to help. Uh, what do you mean? Let me tell you the story of the shoemaker and the elves. Once upon a time, there lived an old shoemaker. He was an honest man, but with very limited money. He made really nice shoes, but could not earn enough for himself and his wife. One night, he was in his workshop when his wife came to him. What are you doing, dear? I have this last piece of leather left. I am just cutting it out. We'll make a pair of shoes out of it tomorrow. Is it the last piece? What will we do? There are no grains in the cupboard, no wood for the fire, and now no more leather. Don't worry, my darling. Something will work out. The old couple finished their housework and before they went to sleep, the shoemaker put the leather on his workbench. The next morning, he got up early to make a pair of shoes out of the leather he had kept. To his surprise, instead of the leather, there lay a beautiful pair of shoes. He picked them up and observed them closely. They were made out of the same leather that he had put out the night before. He called his wife. Dear, dear, come see this. What a lovely pair of shoes! They are just perfect! Yes, look at the stitches. They are so tiny and spaced so perfectly. But I didn't make them. You didn't? Then who did? I don't know. Why would someone help us like this? I can't even think of anyone who can make such good shoes. You make the best shoes I have ever seen and these are better than yours too. 
I agree. Anyway, let us not get carried away. Let us put them in the display window and hope that we can get some money for them. Just a few minutes after the shoemaker had put the shoes on the display, a wealthy merchant stopped outside his door. He paid a good sum for the shoes and bought them. The shoemaker was very happy. He went and bought food for the house. With the remaining money, he bought two pieces of leather. When it was night, his wife called out to him. What are you doing? It's time for us to sleep. Yes, dear. I am just cutting out these leather pieces so I can stitch them into shoes tomorrow. The next morning, when the shoemaker and his wife came down to the workshop, they were surprised to see two new pairs of shoes on the table where he had kept the leather pieces. Would you look at that? These shoes are even more beautiful than the first pair. Let me put them up for sale and thank whoever is helping us out. Soon after the shoemaker had put up the two pairs of shoes for sale, other wealthy men of the town came and bought them. They paid a hefty price for them. The shoemaker bought more food supplies and leather from the money he got. Again that night, he cut the leather and kept it to stitch it in the morning. The next morning, he saw that the leather had been made into shoes again. And as soon as he put them up for sale, they were bought in exchange of good money. This went on for many days. The shoemaker started doing well. His business prospered and his shop would always be full with customers. One night, as they were closing the shop, the shoemaker had an idea. I cannot stop thinking about those who help us. Why don't we hide behind the cupboard tonight and see who it is? Yes, that's a brilliant idea. Let's hide and check out. After some time, they saw two elves enter the workshop through the crack in the window. They headed to the workbench and started making shoes from the leather kept there. Although they were making these lovely shoes for the shoemaker, they had no shoes on. They wore torn shirts and very thin tights. They did their work carefully and left through the window again. Oh dear goodness, such kind elves they are. We must repay them. Yes. When you go to the market tomorrow, get me some nice cloth. I will make clothes for our little helpers. The next day, the shoemaker got many fancy cloths and good leather. 
while his wife made beautiful clothes for the elves he made soft shoes for them when night fell they placed the gifts for the elves on the table they also laid out delicious food and treats for them then they hid behind the cupboard again and waited for the elves to return when the elves came they were overjoyed to see the gifts and the delicious food they wore their new clothes its stomach full and went on to make shoes for the shoemaker once they were done they slipped out of the window i am so happy to see our little helpers happy Yes, and they looked so wonderful in their new clothes, didn't they? Tonight let's keep some more dinner ready for them. What do you think? Yes, dear. That night, the shoemaker and his wife again kept dinner for the elves. But tonight, they did not hide behind the cupboard. Instead, they went to sleep. The next morning, when they came to the workshop, the shoemaker and his wife were disappointed to see that the dinner plates remained untouched. Even the leather that the shoemaker had cut out and put on the table remained as it is. I wonder what happened to them. Mm, maybe they will come tonight? Yes, let's hope so. The shoemaker and his wife again kept the food for the elves but were disappointed in the morning as the elves did not show up in the night. They waited for the elves many nights but they never returned. Do you think they overheard us? Perhaps they did. Elves are very shy creatures. They usually like to be left alone. What will happen to the shop now? Oh, it will be fine. I will miss my little helpers, but I will manage. The shoemaker went back to making the shoes himself. His shop continued to prosper. But he and his wife always remembered the elves and remained thankful to them for their help. So you see Tofu, some people are willing to help but are too shy to take help from others. Yes, Tia. I understand now. Also, it doesn't mean that you have to be angry with them. You can be thankful to them in your heart. Thank you, Tia. If you wouldn't have shared this with me, I think I would have lost a very good friend. Now, when Megan tells me she doesn't want my help, I will respect that more. Good to know that. Now let's go home. I am very hungry. Mrs. Farrow has gone mad. How does she think that I can help her? Why? What does she want? She wants me to help her pick the leaves from her lawn. How can I do that? I am just a kid. 
It is something that grown-ups do. Yes, grown-ups and Pocahontas. Pocahontas Once upon a time, an 11-year-old girl called Matauka lived with her tribe, the Powhatans. Matauka was always cheerful and a playful person. Hence, people lovingly called her Pocahontas. One day in the year, 1607. Many English ships arrived on the shores where the tribe settled. The Englishmen founded a colony called Jamestown there. One day, she met Captain John Smith and took a liking to him immediately. Hello, what are you doing here in the colony? I know, the winters can be hard, so I have brought supplies for the settlers. There's food and some warm clothes. That is very kind of you. Thank you. This went on for an entire year. Pocahontas helped the Englishmen build their colony and settle there. But the tribesmen grew weary of the settlers. We should ask them to leave our lands immediately. This has gone on too long. We should reason with Captain John Smith. I think he is a powerful and kind wizard. I say we drive them out of here. Give me a chance. Let me talk to them. They know I am a friend. Okay, Pocahontas, tell the settlers to provide the tribe with guns in exchange of food and supplies we have been providing them. The tribe wants you to supply them with guns in exchange of the provisions that they send. That is not possible. With both sides adamant about their decisions, there wasn't much to be done. But Pocahontas did not give up. She continued to keep the peace between the two sides. Her patience and thoughtfulness kept the two from going on an immediate war against each other. One day, Pocahontas learnt that John Smith died in an explosion. She was very sad to know this and stopped visiting the colony.
with Captain John Smith gone, I am in charge. I am tired of these fights with the tribe. I say we kidnap Pocahontas and get leverage against the tribe chief. Orders given by the new captain were carried out. Pocahontas was kidnapped and put on a ship immediately. There she met John Rolfe. She converted to Christianity and married Rolfe. Soon they had a son. Few years later, Pocahontas travelled to London. There she met Captain John Smith. I thought you were dead. I am so happy to see you alive and well. John Smith and Pocahontas spent the rest of the evening talking about past times. A few days later, she contracted smallpox and died in London at the age of 22. When John Smith found out about her death, he said, Pocahontas saved the colony from famine, confusion and imminent death. She was 11 years old when she started helping the colony, Tia. Yes. I think there is no age for helping someone. You can do it any time. Let me go and help Mrs. Farrow now. Okay, see you later then. What's wrong, Tofu? My friends, they never want to do anything together. Each one of them wants to do things his own way. Because of this, our school project was delayed and today we lost our collection of game cards to the other boys. Oh, that's bad. I don't know what to tell them. Can you talk to them, Tia, please? You always know what to say. I think it's important that you talk to them, Tofu. But I will help you. How? What should I say to them? Tell them the story of the cows and the tiger. The cows and the tiger. Once upon a time, four cows lived together. They were best friends. They did everything together. They grazed together and went to the water hole together. But they did not know that a tiger had his eyes on them for a long time. Ah, those cows, they look so delicious. But only if I could catch any one of them alone. I wouldn't hunt and eat her immediately. Alas, they always go everywhere together. I cannot tackle all four of them together. It will result in my death. One day, the cows had a disagreement and fought with each other. I don't want to see any of you again. I can't believe I thought you were all my friends. I don't want to have anything to do with you all anymore. You are the most selfish cows in the world. I am better off without you. 
it will do me good to get rid of you all. And so, for the first time, the cows went their separate ways. None of them wanted to see each other again and the tiger got the chance he had been waiting for. Oh, I can't believe my eyes. It has finally happened. Now I will kill each of them and have a hearty meal. The tiger did exactly that. He attacked each cow one by one. With her friends not there to protect her, each was defenseless against the ruthless tiger. And died. That's the perfect story, dear. Just what I need to bring my friends together. I will go and tell them right now. Okay, let me know what happened, Tofu. I surely will, dear. Bye. What's wrong, Tofu? I don't want to go to school today. Jim and Jerry took all the tokens I had collected for the charity and submitted it as their own. Now they're going to win the appreciation sticker. Don't worry about it, Tofu. Sometimes it's okay to let go of things and just hold on to the joy they brought you. I don't know, dear. Do you know a nice story to help me believe? Sure, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, a poor farmer was plowing his field. When he hit something hard, it was a large metal pot. What's this? A metal pot? I wonder if there is something more valuable underneath. In the hope that he could find something more valuable, the farmer dug deeper and wider. Tired after hours of searching, the farmer decided to rest. He left his spade in the pot. and lay down under the tree. A while later, when he got up and went back to the pot, he was surprised. How is this possible? The pot is full of hundreds of spades. I had left only one in it. Looks like this is a magical pot. Let me see what will happen if I put a mango in it. Just as the farmer had thought, the one mango turned into hundreds of mangoes when he left it in the pot. 
This is truly a magical pot. I will take it home and use it to tide over our troubles. The farmer went home and hid the pot at a safe place. He then went to the market and sold the mangoes. He earned a handsome sum for them. On the way back, he brought some grains. He went home and put each one of them in the pot one by one. enough of grains to last his family for the rest of the year. The farmer called his wife and told her everything that had happened. blessing. We should use it wisely to become rich but also keep it safely hidden. The farmer agreed with his wife. Over the year, he slowly started putting things in the pot. Fruits, vegetables, textiles and in some years, he turned around his family's fortune. Though they had been secretive and very careful about their magic pot, people started noticing how they had become rich. And soon their secret was out. It even reached the king's ears. Such a powerful magical pot should be a part of the king's treasury. The farmer has no right to keep it. Only I have the right to own that pot. The king ordered the soldier to bring the pot to the palace. The soldier stormed into the farmer's home. and confiscated the pot. They brought it to the king. Let me see what is inside the pot that makes it so magical. Once I find what it is, I will become a hundred times more powerful. The king peered over the pot and looked into it. As he did, he lost his balance and fell into the pot. As he fell, he hit his head on the edge of the pot and became unconscious. When he woke up, he saw that there were hundreds of kings like him. They all fought each other to get to the throne and died. Soon the news reached the farmer and his wife. Should we get the pot back now? The king was foolish and his curiosity killed him. But it is not safe to keep the pot anymore. We have enough money and riches to take care of us and our many next generations. Let us leave the pot within the king's treasury. Oh, thank you, dear. That was indeed an inspiring story. And I feel much better now letting go of those tokens. Good to know that, Tofu. Now will you please finish your cereal so that we can go? For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.